What's up everyone, we're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shaw. Welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today, commonly requested topic and a timely topic. What are we talking about? Today, we're talking about some of our favorite sunscreens, but then we're gonna help tailor it towards your skin. And we're gonna do this by talking about sunscreens by skin type. So we always break things down by skin type because you don't have my skin type, you don't have his skin type, and you're gonna wanna look for what's gonna suit you best. And then we also highlight some of our favorite ones that I personally love that are cosmetically elegant. And he'll talk about some of the ones that he really likes for sport and active wear. So the best of Dr. Lee sunscreens, here we go. Here we go. All right, briefly, let's talk a little bit about sunscreen without going too crazy. The goal is just to be wearing one every single day. So if you don't like any of our recommendations, that's fine. Just choose the one that you like and wear it every single day. Our goal is SPF 30 or greater, so that all of our recommendations will fall into that. If you're out in the sun and out in the water, water resistance is very helpful. And if you have hyperpigmentation, I think a tinted sunscreen gives you a little added bonus. Beyond that, we kind of let things be tailored to your skin and your individual goals, which is always just very important to us. Now, when we talk about the different types of sunscreen, we have chemical or the organic versus physical or the inorganic. And the assumption here is actually that they all have about a similar efficacy or they're equally effective. And that tends to be true. It's highly regulated in the United States. The FDA governs this. And although some things do happen every year, there's a sunscreen controversy. In general, the assumption is that these are going to be equally efficacious. So that's going to be based off of your preference, your goals. As long as you are wearing it consistently, that is the most important thing. So we don't have a preference between your chemical or mineral sunscreens. Do whatever suits you best. However, there is one ingredient that I do avoid in my chemical sunscreens, and that's that's oxybenzone for many, many reasons. Uh, one of them includes photo allergy. So that's the one that I avoid. The rest of them right now, we don't have a preference. So now onto the best sunscreens for dry skin. So we've talked about this before. We both actually love the idea of sunscreens as your moisturizer or picking a moisturizer with a sunscreen. It's effective, it simplifies your routine, and it also makes reapplying actually just feel natural. I think inherently people are in a habit of reapplying moisturizers throughout the day. So if you think about a sunscreen in that way, reapplying just tends to happen. First up, moisturizing sunscreens, they usually have a lot of moisturizing ingredients. One step, easy to apply. One of the issues I've noticed with moisturizing sunscreens is that they tend to pale a little bit more. And I think that's because it's hard to get the physical filters in there without having it, because it, I mean, one of the things is that it creates a film. And so in that process, it can pill if you rub it on too vigorously. So a lot of times patting these things in can be very, very helpful. So one of my favorite sunscreens for dry skin is the La Roche-Posay Tellerian Double Repair Moisturizing UV. <laughs> whatever that one is. So this is SPF 30. Um, it is very moisturizing. Again, I would pad in to avoid any pilling with it. It does have niacinamide and your prebiotic thermal waters. A lot of the products from La Roche-Posay are very good for the skin, but you're gonna find it to be moisturizing and at the same time protect you from the sun. Now, one of the ones that I've used regularly and my wife just uses all of the time is the Dermatology Universal Moisturizer with SPF. I think that's the order there. There it is. Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. Very lightweight moisturizer, I'll say. It's more of a lotion than a cream mm. in consistency. Lightweight moisturizer, it's also tinted, so great for hyperpigmentation, and is actually pretty near invisible, I would say, even though it's a mix between zinc oxide and octanoxate. Yeah, great moisturizer overall. Uh, easy to apply, foundation dupe, really can do a lot in a routine to help simplify things. So those are just two recommendations for dry skin. A lot of the ones we're gonna be talking about later on are also gonna work for dry skin because they're gonna have some moisturizing ingredients. So I wouldn't overthink it with this one. Just look for a moisturizer that can double as a sunscreen and there are a lot of options out there for this. The next category is for oily skin, which I think is something that comes up a lot more commonly, is like, how do I get a sunscreen that's not gonna feel like heavy and clogged my pores, make my skin feel oilier, and potentially make my acne work. So one of our favorite ones from way back, Elta MD UV Clear. This is just kind of a foundational OG for niacinamide-based lightweight sunscreens. It just sits very well 
um, kind of like oily, acne prone skin. Plus it has niacinamide in it, like I said, for a little bit of oil control. So this is lightweight OG. It's like a dermatologist favorite. It's really what introduced Alta MD into the world. They have both tinted and untinted forms of this. Great for oily, blemish, acne prone skin, even for rosacea because of that niacinamide. This is one that's kind of lightweight. It's going to be good for oily skin. I do have a preference now for a different Alta MD product. We'll talk a little bit about at the end in our best overall products. All right. So another one that came up on my radar, this one was recommended by our medical assistants, which is what's cool about sunscreen because, I mean, I'll take recommendations from anybody about sunscreens because there are so many options out there. And as long as they meet these minimum requirements of SPF 30, I'm willing to try it and check it out and see if it blends well with my skin. This is the Cetaphil Pro Oil Absorbing Moisturizer SPF 30. So this one, uh, it has oil absorbing properties. So that's why it's great for oily skin. Um, and it's also a moisturizer in the sense that it really blends well with the skin, high hydrates the skin, it has ceramide in it, and at the same time, leaves absolutely no white cast. So this one is gonna be great for all skin tones. See, that's a great one. Like for someone whose skin leans a little bit oily, like I'm always looking for mattifying, lightweight products. So another one I've actually been loving a ton, and it's kind of been an alternative for me for the LTMD UV Clear. This one's actually a Korean-based sunscreen, which I've been delving a lot deeper into over the last year. We'll talk about the nuances of Korean skincare and kind of the filters they use in a whole nother video. This one is the Isn't Tree Like Watery, Watery Like, Like Water Sun Gel. Watery Sun Gel. Watery Sun Gel, there's no like in there. There's no like. <laughs> the, okay, the only thing I don't like about this is the name. It's just not truly a gel. It's definitely more like a light lotion. This is broad spectrum, although the sunscreen filters are not FDA approved because they haven't approved a lot of these Korean sunscreens ingredients, but it does block UVA. UVB, it's lightweight, it's hydrating, it has niacinamide for oil control, and it has Centella Asiatica, which can be soothing and have some other benefits as well. So it's just a great combination of ingredients Plus it's hydrating. Great one, specifically for oily skin in the sense that it is super lightweight. It is, I agree, more like a lotion, but when you're thinking about oily skin, oil, oil gel, base moisturizers, lotions, tend to do a little bit better because they tend to be a little bit more lightweight and have a higher water content so that they don't feel like they're clogging your pores for those people. Korean sunscreens, super interesting. There was some controversy in regards to some of the Korean sunscreen manufacturers regarding the Purito scandal. Um, this was, you know, not necessarily a fault of the company, but more of a fault of the testing agencies and the manufacturers. They were creating these, but it created a lot of skepticism around the Korean sunscreens, which I don't really think is fair because the US has faced a lot of their controversies in sunscreens as well. No one is without fault um, in the sunscreen world. So I wouldn't <laughs> completely write them off. The only caveat there is that because these are sold through a third party, there's no like recourse, right? If something goes wrong with a sunscreen that is approved by the FDA, you can go to the US actually you know, get some recourse from the company. Whereas if it's an overseas company, there's just no recourse. I'm like, who are you going to go to? Right. So that's the only thing there, but these are lovely sunscreens. They are cosmetically elegant and everyone loves them. Korean sunscreens actually tend to be pretty affordable as well. I wish we had better filters in the U S like these ones, cause these are awesome. It would be better if they were FDA approved because we would have at least some type of organization in the U S. So next up, we're going to be talking about the best active sunscreens. These are for people that are outside or running around their surf Finn they're climbing mountains, not me. So I'm like an indoor person. Uh, and so, you know, even if I do exercise, because I actually went to Orange Theory yesterday. So, you know, I'm getting fit. But at the same time, these are for more people that are like outside in the sun doing sun type hobbies. Not me. That's him. <laughs> yeah, I asked him so just before we started rolling this. I was like, do you have a favorite uh, active sunscreen? He says, no way. <laughs> I mean, <what's laughs> that? So I'll tell you my favorite too, though, right? So if you're, if you're new here, you don't know me, I do actually do a lot outdoors, whether it's exercise, running, surfing, whatever. I'm outside a lot or just hanging out with family and friends. Like it's just a part of my life. I'm standing outside your window. So... <laughs> But I'm also all about protecting your skin, right? I think it's about engaging your life, your hobbies, your occupation, but doing it smartly and trying to protect your skin as best you can while you live your life. That's just my take. Now, I have two here and they're like very polar opposites. So the first sunscreen is for that person who just doesn't like give a flying poop about a white cast. It is the 
thickest sunscreen I have. This is just, if you don't care if you have white cast, this one's for you. This is Neutrogena Sheer Zinc. I'm never gonna get a free sample of them for this. They're never gonna send me, they're never gonna sponsor me because they probably hate every time I talk about it. Super thick, ultra effective. If you look at my videos, I wear multiple layers like a white cast. The reason I love it, I find it to be a lot less irritating on my eyes than a lot of other active sunscreens. It's like when you're outside and you're doing active things, you're gonna sweat and it's gonna run. If you're in the water, it's gonna run. It doesn't irritate my eyes like a lot of other active sunscreens. If you wear it thick, actually opaque, non-tinted sunscreens can protect from visible light too, but you have to wear it thick like me. So that's your thick white cast, ultra effective. You don't care what anyone else says or thinks. That's yours. The alternative for someone who doesn't want to look like a goober in the sun is actually the Think Sport SPF 50. Um, also broad spectrum. I believe this one comes in tinted and untinted. We'll have to double check that. I don't wear the tinted version because it actually blends pretty well. But this one similarly is just a pure zinc one. It has multiple moisturizing ingredients, has antioxidants in it. Pairing all of that together, it's just a very well-rounded active sunscreen. And of course, with that, it's also water resistant. So those are my two spectrums. Water resistant up to 80 minutes, that's the maximum. So that's what you're really looking for when you're out playing water sports. You're out When you're out doing sports. When you're playing, you're playing <laughs> sports, indoor person. Yeah, but these are also for your occupational people. You know, I, th I think in the skincare world, we forget that people actually like work outside, they live outside, construction, um, fishermen. We see a lot of people here who actually do that for their living, you know? Um, and I've actually been talking to some professional athletes and sun avoidance is just not feasible for them, right? So we have to find things that work with active skin, occupational skin that won't be irritating and you can use. So we do have a huge farming population where we live and take care of these patients who a lot of times and construction workers who don't want to wear sunscreen because they feel like, you know, it leaves a white cast potentially as well, or they can't just get into a skincare routine or it burns their eyes. And so having active sunscreen is really important. You can't be always an indoor person like me. <laughs> In 20 years, Dr. Shaw is gonna look a lot younger than me. Like no question. All right, so now let's talk about the best sunscreens overall which to me are the ones that are cosmetically elegant. This is what I look for in my sunscreen. So I want my minimum requirements of sun protection um, at least. And then how does it look on my skin? Am I willing to wear this every day? Because that's the critical thing. You need to wear it. So I look for products that I really enjoy wearing. Let's start it off with the Elta MD UV Restore Tinted Sunscreen, which is what I'm wearing right now. Beautiful sunscreen is a little bit of a heavier sunscreen. It has that squalling base. It is a pure mineral sunscreen. It doesn't leave me with the white cast. I, I say that with the caveat because if it may leave you with the white cast, but I've noticed no white cast and nobody I've tried this on has noticed a white cast with it. it leaves you with that very dewy finish. I absolutely love it. I think a lot of you will love it if you try it as well. If you hadn't taken it, that might have actually been on my list too. That's definitely been a go-to for me. It's weird, I don't know how these just showed up in my pocket. The first one I'll talk about here is- I object, I object. Okay, we've not done this before. I'm actually cutting myself off. Now I've fallen in love with someone new, so I'm sorry to my old choices, they've been replaced. We actually talked about this before we shot this video and I was like, I think this is my go-to, we went back and forth and it is now my go-to. This is actually called Isden Airy Fatona. Ageless, and this is my best uh, overall. Best overall, okay. Now I'll tell you why. So in my mind, I have this checklist of sunscreens. I'm like, okay, is it effective? We talked about this. Yes, it is effective. Does it have complementing ingredients for sun protection? It does. It has L-ascorbic acid, it has vitamin E, there's very potent antioxidants. Then it has a little bit extra, and I'm becoming a fan of things that are extra because they stand out, but it has photolyase. So this is like a plankton-derived ingredient, and this actually might help repair some of the sun damage that's already existing, and that's pretty unique to to a sunscreen. So that kind of elevated it in my mind from some of the other choices I had. Additionally, you know, it has moisturizing ingredients. It does require a little bit of extra work, so you have to shake it. It's an emulsion every time you use it. But it is tinted, so it also protects against visible light. Now, the thing that makes this extremely functional is one, it's tinted, which we said can be a plus for many people. But I'm gonna show you something here. For a pure mineral sunscreen, and this one is zinc oxide, watch this blendability just it is amazing. Okay, and this was real time, right? 
Yeah, no cast. Crazy. I actually went out and I spent a decent amount of money on a lot of pyramidal sunscreens to see which ones blended. Nothing compared to this. Now I will say, this is a good sunscreen, very popular sunscreen amongst dermatologists. So you kind of hear about this one quite frequently if you go to visit dermatologists. However, it does have fragrance in it. So if you do have sensitive skin, just be aware of that. You know, I personally am not like a huge fan of putting fragrance in my skincare products, especially when I'm recommending them to all of you because I know many of you who watch us do have sensitive skin. But if you're looking for a very blendable sunscreen that is a zinc oxide based sunscreen, this is an amazing sunscreen. Completely agree with Dr. Shaw. I think being aware of fragrance as a potential allergen irritant is very important. Don't think I don't think that. I do completely buy into that sentiment. But if you have to be deliberate or you're going to pick one fragranced item, like consider this not because it smells good, but because the rest of the ingredients are worth it. It's rewind time. So next up, you can't mention cosmetically elegant without mentioning super goop. Super goop. It's like you're almost like skeptical. These are so good. You're like, how are these so good? <laughs> One, uh, the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. This thing is, I can say with 1000% confidence, that no one will have a white cast from this product. It is completely clear, even out of the bottle, which is amazing. It, is. Um, it does leave a little bit of like a primer finish. Like it, it feels like primer when you're using it. Some people don't like the texture of it, but this thing is completely invisible. I mean, it's, it's really, really, an amazing sunscreen, Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. And they also have the Super Goop Glow Screen, which has a little bit of that glowy, has a tint in it, um, and it leaves you with a little bit of a shimmer. Happens to be my wife's favorite sunscreen. So Super Goop Glow Screen has a little bit of a tint, a little bit of a shimmer that you may not like for everybody. Also, again, invisible. Super Goop has a reputation and is deserved and earned every bit of it. Uh, my next one was actually a sneaky one to me. Again, I've been trying out Korean sunscreens a lot over about the past five months months actually. This one is Beauty of Joseon. This one has multiple things going for me. Super lightweight. It's refreshing in a way. Uh, it blends on quickly. It's like a very smooth, quick, fast finish. It has niacinamide, so it helps with oil control. For those who lean a little oily, that's nice. It has antioxidants once again. And I love that partnership of antioxidants and sunscreen. Sunscreens block the sun damage from happening. Antioxidants help prevent and repair the damage after the sun has actually hit the skin. So they're kind of like additive complements ingredients that really do a great job here. So for me, this is just another product, multiple positives. Uh, I've just been loving this. The Korean sunscreens are hard to compete with, I'll be honest, because they just, they do so much with these filters and are still near invisible. No white cast with these and are very cosmetically elegant products. So next up, a mineral sunscreen that I've been really loving. I don't know if you, have you tried? I don't know if you've tried this or not, but it's the Biosance Sheer Mineral Sunscreen. This one is pure zinc sunscreen. It has that squalene finish that you always get with the Biosense products. You may have to work this one in a little bit. I would say it's near invisible, not invisible, like you know these Korean sunscreens or super goop. Anything with the zinc oxide base, you're gonna get a little bit of a white with it unless you kind of smooth it in. But for a mineral sunscreen, this is about as close to invisible as you can get with them. Just absolutely love the way it looks on my skin, like all, Biosense products, I feel like they just, they nail that component of it. They nail texture, feel, and look with products. I mean, really just crush it. Love this one. Anyone who's tried it will tell you the same thing. It's really a killer in that mineral sunscreen category. All right, so last up in our best overall is Black Girl Sunscreen. This one is one of the first that I just saw nail the blendability with dark skin tones. This is just an excellent, excellent finish for people who struggle with any sort of cast. Plus the ingredients are also on point. Fragrance free, it has jojoba oil, which I really like in skincare products and just the blendability. I mean, that's the main thing I'm emphasizing because your skincare routine otherwise is gonna do a lot of stuff. You know, it's gonna have niacinamide, it's gonna have vitamin C, you're gonna have retinol, you're gonna have all these other ingredients in it. But for me, the most important thing is, are you getting the sun protection that you need? How are you gonna get it? You're gonna get it because you're gonna wear a sunscreen that you actually like. And so to get people of all skin tones to wear sunscreen is really important. Important. Black Girl Sunscreen nails it with that. So it's their SPF 31. I really like it. Blends very well and it's actually very affordable as well. And you can pretty much find it anywhere. All right, so that kind of rounds out our list of some of our favorite sunscreens for different skin tones. We have a lot, so I mean like, yeah, this is a very truncated list. Like to be honest, like we could have gone on a very long time about sunscreens because there are hundreds and there's gonna be more and more. So this is a dynamic list for sure. Exactly. Try to give you this like, <laughs> 
like a limited menu as possible here, but there are so many good sunscreens out there. And if you already have a sunscreen you love, there's no reason to switch it up. Just stick with the one that you're already wearing. But that's it. Sun protection is the foundation for healthy skin. So you've got to incorporate something on our list, on your list, something from this into your skincare routine before you do anything else, especially for photo aging or skin cancer prevention. Super important. Nothing else is more important than protection. And 90%, they say, of aging is caused by the sun. Skin cancer, super important. Just wear sunscreen, anyone, wear it every single day. Your life and skin will be so much better as a result of it. So please like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate you as always. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. All right, see you next time.